Hello everybody, so today I'm going to be doing a snow scene in watercolour using a lot of wet and wet technique and also creating texture with cling film which I've done before in my experimental watercolour lessons and uh, this is the image I'm going to be working from which is uh, Hollingbury Woods in 2012 when we had that lovely snow that just was just gorgeous, powdery snow um, and it's going to be my Christmas card. Um, just a thing to do before you do a watercolour, it's a very good idea just to do a little sketch. So here I was, I just trying out my different colours, what's going to work, um, and also doing a little sketch to figure out how I'm going to approach it. So it's worthwhile doing that in most cases with watercolours. Um, <clears throat> so let's crack on. Uh, so I have my palette here. I'm using Tube Windsor & Newton watercolours. And I'm primarily going to be using gold ochre and a purple I have mixed up from uh, uh, Elysian Crimson. So this is Elysian Crimson. There you are, you can see what's going on. Elysian Crimson and French Ultramarine. Oh, that's entirely too red. Oops, that's the wrong one. Let's try that one. So, and then having this uh, paper as a sort of test sheet. Oh, you can't see what I'm doing. So, so kind of a purpley colour. And then some French ultramarine, a blue colour, and then I want that nice glow of sunshine on snow, which I think primarily is going to be yellow ochre. Um, and I've also got here a bit of perylene green, which is a really nice dark green. It's very cool and dark, very nice. Um, and a little bit of Payne's grey, which I might brown up a bit with um, some of these uh, burnt umbers I've got here. Okay, so I'm going to crack on and get painting. It's always quite nerve-wracking to start painting in a watercolour because uh, you never know what's going to happen. But because I've done my little sketch, I know the layers I'm going to do it in. So I'm just going to pop that there to refer to it. And <clears throat> I'm going to, in that fact, initially, this is lovely posh paper. It's the kind Cecil Rice uses. I think it's uh, 30 pa uh, 300 pound. Is that right? Yeah, 300 pound paper. Um, I think that's right. So it's really stiff and it's got a lovely surface. So I'm just going to wet all this because I want to put on my lightest colour first. So I want to get this kind of aura of sunshine. Hang on a minute, let me just rescue the back of this picture. Um, Draw that off. Uh, so I'm going to put that in first and then actually add some of the darker colours. But it's going to be a big free way of painting. And this is the nerve-wracking bit. So this is now damp, I hope. So I'm going to have a nice wash of yellow ochre. Uh, oh, I suppose I could draw a bit. That might help. So I want, particularly, I want to have uh, the horizon. It's on a bit of a slope. And I want to have these marks, because this is the direction of the sunlight. And then we've got this, uh, which is going to be sort of light at the end of the tunnel. And I've got a tree here. Now this is wet, it's a bit difficult, but now I've got some trees here. So really, that's all I'm going to do, because a lot of it's going to be actually drawn in. I'm just seeing if you can see it. You probably can't. I didn't want to use it too heavily, because the because this is a coloured crayon, it will stay there. So this is all nice and wet. So I'm going to go in and just put on a wash of yellow ochre for all the nice light yellow bits. Over here. And over here, so lots and lots of water at this stage uh, and that sort of slopes up like that. Eek! Always have some kitchen towel handy so I'm just going to blot a little bit of this away here and there. I'm going to soften these edges. I want some yellow ochre over here because this is catching the sunshine. You get that lovely warmth when snow catches, uh, when sunshine catches snow. So I want that bit to be warm and it's sort of going like this. So this is a very free beginning I hope. And then I've got this very nice, really white area just here. And I want to put a little bit, I'm just going to soak all this with water actually. I want to have some interest around there. So a little bit more of yellow ochre. Let's not go crazy now. Uh, because the trouble of using uh, sort of yellows and purples is that they will neutralise all yellows and blue and they will turn green on you. So I'm just testing out my purple here, which is probably good, I think. 
it's quite um, pale but I'm just going to go in I'm going to be brave and go in quite quickly and if you notice I'm also standing up I generally always paint watercolors standing up unless they're small so I can actually see what's going on here so I want all this in here uh, coming down here maybe leaving some space there I'm just going to put on there like that and then we've got this kind of blue snow so I want a little bit of more French ultramarine in these blue shadows here and we've got some things happening here I'll put those in sort of dappled shade I might spray that a bit so I get some softer edges and I want a bit more blue uh, French ultramarine is always interesting because it granulates. Uh, it's a sort of property of the chemicals it's made of. And you just have to say, well, that's what I want it to do. And in fact, I'm just going to go in here and blot some areas here because I want some light within there. But I want these big sort of sunbeams coming down here. Um, and this is really quite dark just here. So again, I'm using the biggest brush I can bear to use. And then I'm coming down here and mix up a bit more colour. Ooh, I think that's a bit on the move side, so a bit more French ultramarine in there. And I want some short shapes up here too. Now I really want to keep these white shapes, but I'm going to soften these edges. I might move to a slightly smaller brush because that one holds a lot of water. I just want to soften those edges. Ooh, I've got some nice effect there. That purple's doing something weird with that, which is nice. And you have to, I'm not going to be doing it photographically because this is quite an expressive way of painting. Um, and it's not going to uh, be a photographic image. And I do want to soften those lines. I just want the feeling of being in Horringbury Woods when it was snowing. And in fact, I think I want some more colour here. And I'm going to be, so I'm sort of painting the far away bit first. Yes, I like that. But let's see what happens. And I want to have this idea of uh, light at the end of the tunnel. So that's why it's going to be my Christmas card. And I want some darker areas in here. So I'm trying to respond to what the painting's doing for me at this time. So this is definitely darker over here. Some darker areas. And over here you've got this warmth of the yellow ochre. So while this is still wet, I'm going to use my kitchen towel as a tool to refine some of these lights. So I'm going to blot away ah, some of this area. And I want to catch that idea of this raking sunlight, which gives the painting a bit more perspective. So this is all painting like the clappers because you're painting while watching paint dry, which is a bit difficult sometimes. And there we are, a bit more French ultramarine in there maybe. And hopefully the water will do the work for me. And I just want to bring those areas up. And then we've got this, I think there's an evergreen tree behind there. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do is, no, first things first, I'm going to add a bit of interest in the far away distance because there's something happening here isn't there but it's very pale because it's far away and I want to have a little bit of something happening over here and if I put a bit of blue on it's going to turn green on me but I want the water to do a lot of the work for me so a little bit more yellow ochre I think I think I think over here oh, I'm fiddling now but let's see how it goes eek there we go. I'm going to leave it like that. Probably you should always leave a watercolour 10% undone and that's hopefully that's going to dry in an interesting fashion. And I just want to soften these edges here and here and here. Look, a little bit more blue maybe in there. Yeah. Don't I? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, back to my evergreen tree. 
So I want a little bit of dark, a dark flash in there. Oops. And I'm going to use this perylene green, which is a really nice deep green. And I'm just going to plonk some on there, even though I really like that bit. I'm going to plonk some on here. Um, just here to be this evergreen tree behind these other trees. I think, I think. It's always very nerve-wracking painting a watercolour. But there's an evergreen tree behind those trees. Uh, <clears throat> right, I now take my cling film. Because I want to create texture here. No hell, that's drying already. So I'm just going to spray that a bit. And I think I might add a little bit more colour. I need to be, have it a little bit deeper. So this nice cool so sonosine. So there we go, Make, mixing up some purple. And I want a little bit more going on here, I think. Especially up there. There, there. And eek. Let's worry about that later. I've just bought myself some new magic sponge erasers, so hopefully I'll always get a chance to wipe off some bits I don't like. Okay, so now I'm going to put this cling film on. I want it to scrunch up a bit. Come on, scrunch, 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 scrunch. I'm going to flatten it down. I want it to be quite scrunchy, so you can actually move it around a bit. Eek see what shapes it makes. And let's hope that'll be fine. Scrunch, scrunch, scrunch. And now I have to leave it to dry for at least 10 minutes. I think I want those to be like that. And this will create a little bit of texture. Oops, there's nothing there. And there's no paint to pick up either. So let's worry about that when we reveal the big reveal. Um, that'll be okay. That'll be okay. Okay, so I'm going to leave that to dry and I will join you uh, <coughs> in another 10 minutes. Okay, so now we have the big reveal to see what happened to my painting when I put the cling film on. Whoa, that's kind of interesting texture. Uh, so hopefully I can work with that. I'm going to be starting to put the trees on now and I'm going to be using a slightly smaller brush and I probably will, this will probably be a straight run through. I think I won't need to get anything else to dry. Okay, so, hmm, I was going to say, so I want to create this sort of arc of tree branches here. So I'm going to start out quite pale uh, with French ultramarine and I'm going to uh, start putting some tree branches in. So I just want to arc over. So these are the very far away ones. In fact, I'm going to go even a little bit paler over here. In fact, what I'm going to do <coughs> is just get my reference because uh, I have painted this before some time ago, uh, but it is actually on Pinterest and um, Thing Link. I just want to refer to my picture to remind me how I did it. So I'm just going to come down here and have these trees here using just a nice uh, size 6 brush, I think this is. I want to put those in, just leaving the texture I created to be part of the background. I'm coming down here. I think I might have to soften those edges in the fullness of time. Uh, so I'm just trying to create this idea of faraway trees. I might have a bit more blue going on in there. Faraway trees. Rather than having to paint every single little twig, I just want this idea of these branches far away, creating this nice tunnel effect. And this should be quite... I hope it's going to dry paler. I'm just going to pick up... I'm going to have a bit more yellow ochre in my life. Just over here, some yellow ochre going on. Because it's catching that warmth. So I'm layering up watercolour 
and I want a little bit over here too. It's a shame I got rid of that really nice bit, but never mind. And over here, um, and a little bit more in here. Just putting on a little bit. And then I'm going to work in there <coughs> with some <coughs> more branches, but I may have to wait for that to dry a bit. Meanwhile, <coughs> I don't like that bit. So I've got this nice little fuzzy brush here. Oh, it's a stiff brush. This is from CY, so I suppose it must be synthetic some sort, but this is my favourite scrubbing out brush. So I just want to take out a couple of the harsh lines there and act sort of like a magic sponge eraser. Um, and then I'm going to look at some detail in the background. I don't want to go crazy, but just one little bit going on. Is that purpley enough? Could be, could be. So I just want a little bit of stuff happening in here. But again, I'm just going to try and let the water do the work for me and soften those edges around here for that bush. There we are, maybe. As I say, it's very nerve-wracking painting watercolour, especially like this. And then that colour came out really nice. I wonder if I can recreate it. So I'm just going to go in here. No, it'll be a bit dark idea of bushes in the distance. The trick is not to fiddle. Okay, meanwhile back to my trees. So I'm just going to start getting darker and darker. I'm just going to see what happens if I go up here. Yeah, could work, could work. Let's start looking at putting some branches in here. And because it's wet, uh, the, uh, the paint is spreading out a bit. I think I need some more blue bits. So again, it's kind of a general rule of landscapes. If you start far away and then come towards you, I think that works best. I think I might put some more in a bit later. That's referring to my previous picture. Um, <clears throat> okay, so I just want to make that a little bit darker and then have some nice more branches coming here and so I'm going to start increasing the intensity of my wash as I'm applying it really because I want them to be sort of darker as they come closer and I'm just quite freely painting branches I don't want to go crazy and put a lot of detail in but I do want that idea <coughs> of this nice uh, a sort of arch created by these trees. Now, what am I going to do about that bit? Hmm. So maybe uh, a bit of that, a bit of yellow ochre. See what happens. Maybe I'll have some. Ooh, ooh, no, no. Ah, it's a bit yellow. So I want to have this idea of these branches coming over here. And I want to have the trees do a proper bottoms. So I'm just going in there, oops, and up there to make, so we've got three little trees together, almost a coppice tree. I want to put those in possibly there and then deal with the bottom. So I'm just going to soften that edge and make these bottoms look like they exist. So again, soften that edge. I'm going to leave that, I think. Yes, leave it, leave it, leave it. Uh, and I might put a few more branches in here. And again, trying to increase the intensity of the colour as they come forward. So I don't want to fiddle too much. So again, I think I want that to be a little bit darker. But then I want to have another tree here. So increasing the intensity of the colour again. Yeah. And having a tree do that, and maybe one do that. And again, are they getting bluer? And eventually, I am going to resort to Payne's Grey. Ugh, don't like the shape of that tree at all. But let's try and fatten it up. 
and get a good bottom. Why is this not taking her? So again, just keeping the colour, getting them slightly darker as we go along. And actually, I might... <clears throat> well, I definitely want to soften those bottoms before I do anything else. Right. And again, you get these nice little effects that you can keep. They don't have to be uh, slavishly reproduced from that image, because there's a lot of branches there. But I might just leave that as it is. I'll have to wait for that to dry and maybe wait for that to dry. But over here, we have a little stumpy thing. There's a couple of trees here. And there's a sort of stick there. Maybe I'll put one there. No, bad idea. I'm just going to block that out and say I meant to do that. But I do want to ooh, beef up this tree a bit. You're getting this idea of this nice art, but I do want to bring things forward a bit. Yeah. And that's very square. I don't like that at all. So I'm just going to go in here with a bit of a darker shade. Yeah. I've gone into automatic pilot, which is always a mistake when you're painting. I just want a little bit of gold ochre up here. Not that that's probably still wet. But I just want a little hint of sunshine over here. And I might blot it a bit, but at least it's sort of there. Well, that, that was still wet, so that was a mistake. <clears throat> So at this stage, again, I think I'm going to have to let it dry. We'll get the hairdryer out, one or the other, because these I cannot put these things on because the paint is still wet. Hmm. I think we're getting there, sort of, sort of. And what am I going to take this time? Yeah, sort of. mad shapes going on here but never mind but you're getting this idea you can create texture before you uh, <clears throat> rather than having to paint every single twig and I like what's going on there so that's fine <clears throat> so I'm going to let this dry and I'll be back with you again in about five minutes not that you will know okay this is dry now ish uh, it still feels a bit damp if you touch it and it feels cold it's a bit damp but I'm going to go on and we'll tidy up some areas later, but I'm going to go on and come towards the foreground now. So I've got a little gang of trees here, which I hope I'll be able to put in. So I'm going to mix up some Payne's Grey. I think I want it to be more stark and I'm going to throw a little bit of this brown in, just so it's not quite so Payne's Grey like. And yeah, now let's do brown, let's have some more Payne's Grey. Test it. Yeah, that's about right. Uh, <clears throat> so that's freeform painting of trees. So I'm just going to go up here. Try and catch what that tree's doing. And that's a bit pale, a bit more paint grey maybe. And then we've got another one over here. I think maybe I'll put that one there. And I'm just going to tidy them up a bit and add some interest here. Oops, no, put too much water in there. A bit, more, ah, a bit more brown, too much brown. And put some branches on these trees. But I figure out, I should probably figure out what the bottoms are up to. So a bit more kitchen towel. I'm just going to soften that bottom. Oops. Ah. Oh yeah, that's better. Um, <clears throat> and so more interest and slightly darker trees here. So they're sort of going like that. Um, there we go. Oops, I think I need something going down here. Probably. Oh gosh, now I'm <clears throat> thinking about it too much. So 
So just try and pick three. Have those trees doing the tree thing. I want to make that a little bit darker, I think. And probably leave it at that. Didn't want to tidy up their bottoms though, so I'm just going to come around here. A little bit here and there. Okay. There now. Let's get that bottom sorted. And I'll probably soften that eventually and put some shadows in because they are casting shadows. Hopefully that will all be able to come out in the wash. And now, oops, I've got a big tree here. So maybe a slightly bigger brush. So again, this is a size eight, I think. So I'm going to mix up some colour, a bit more Payne's Grey, a bit of this brown, see what that's like. Yeah, that's pretty good, but a bit feeble, so I want it a little bit darker. Yeah, that's probably it. Right, <clears throat> it'll be fine. Fine, 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 fine. Uh, so here I just want to put this tree in about here, I think, and have it go up here. And when you're painting in a straight line and you want to have a straight line, look at where you're going rather than where you are. As I said, it's sort of like driving, that you look at the road ahead, you don't look at where you are. Let's have a branch off here, there's something going on there, and that's rather got fat. It's annoying. <coughs> Let me just keep going. I suppose if I was fancy, I might have put some masking fluid on to have the snow on the tree but I just want this to be quick and simple-ish and I really don't like that shape but never mind and I think I need it a bit fatter down the bottom so there we are fatter down the bottom and then I'm looking at what these branches do uh, and I'm going to go back to my finer brush to Add some more branches. Oops, really don't like that. I'm going to fatten that bit up. Uh, and then up here. So just have a few branches doing this. Don't want to go crazy. Hmm. And I'm just looking at what this tree does. So. Oops, wiggling around. Let's not put it down here. Maybe. And then I'm going to add <coughs> some French ultramarine to the bottom, I think. Here. So it's actually sitting on the snow. I'm just going to spread that out and soften that edge here as well, because I want that to be quite smudgy. here and lifting off some paint with a clean dry brush so I think I want some more snow type color to add a bit of texture down here so this is where you need a bigger brush but softening those edges just with water later and then here these trees are actually casting some shadow so I'm just going to go in with a bit of the purple put those shadows in just here because they too are in the sunshine and soften that edge a little bit and then I'm just going to add a little bit more uh, interest in the faraway one uh, so I'm mixing up the purple again but I want it very light, so I'm adding lots of water. And I'm just going to go in there and have a few more branches, creating this tunnel effect. Ah, it's irritating me now. So I may have to stop soon because the more I do, the worse it will get. I'm just thinking <coughs> what else I need to do to this. So I think 
bit more snow here. I mean, shadow on snow. And I'm just going to soften those edges and hope they blend in to create something soft just there. Right. Hmm. So, a few more branches just here, I think. Okay, I think I'm going to stop. So doing a watercolour is trying to think about um, less is more, basically. And I think if I fiddle with this much more, I might go and tidy up a few elements before I actually have it as my Christmas card. But I am going to... Let's see, I'm fiddling, 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 fiddling. I'm going to leave it at that, I think. And I will finish. So it's quite simple. It's like treating like a watercolour, like a design. So thinking about your design elements so far away and what you want to be schmoozy and then coming forward, waiting for the paint to dry and then putting in the foreground details last. So I think that's going to be it for today. And I will see you next week for a little bit of Venice. Okay, thank you. Bye.